this is the presentation for uh, strabismus reoperation with respect of the width of the palpebral fissure. One of the major problems in strabismus is to operate a patient presenting with strabismus who is previously operated and no data of the previous operation or the preoperative deviation. The possibilities are either a residual strabismus where there is undercorrection of the pre-existing strabismus, that is, less surgery was done. It could be a consecutive strabismus, that is, overcorrection of the pre-existing strabismus, that is, more surgery or more muscles were operated upon. A new deviation as dissociated vertical deviation or inferior oblique overaction could be the cause. Restrictive strabismus, that is muscle restriction or fat adherence syndrome. A lost muscle or slipped muscle during the previous surgery. A post-surgical strabismus, that is strabismus occurring after vitrectomy after retinal detachment surgery or any other surgery. The management depends upon the age of the patient, cycloplegic refraction, glasses, vision, sensory anomalies, that is the normal uh, procedures done for any case of normal strabismus, the presenting deviation, either it is isotropia, exotropia, hypertropia. Also the angle of deviation, the original deviation, how could we resume the original deviation by history or by photos. Also we have to consider the width of the palpebral fissure when uh, deciding for the Reoperation surgery. Ocular motility examination to suspect muscle restriction and muscle underaction. Force reduction test to diagnose restrictive strabismus. The aim now is to make the two eyes parallel. When we operate, we have to make the two eyes parallel. Also, we have to preserve equal widths of the two palpebral fissures, that is to choose the technique to reach this, this aim. If a palpebral fissure is wider, we can choose muscle resection in this eye or muscle resection in the other eye. The explanation is because muscle recession leads to widening of the palpebral fissure while erectus muscle resection leads to some globe retraction and narrowing of the palpebral fissure. These are some of the cases, this case of residual isotropia. This is a boy aged two years presenting with alternating isotropia. The original deviation was isotropia starting at the age of four months. The previous surgery was done at the age of one year. He had a report with him. It was bilateral major rectus recession. Ocular motility denoted left defective abduction as seen in this photo and overaction of the right major rectus. The operation that was done in this child was right major rectus re-recession with hang back technique and this is the post-operative result and the measurement always should be done from the limbus. Here in this lady with wider left palpebral fissure with exotropia the decision was left major rectus muscle resection and this is the post-operative equal width of the palpebral fissure and both eyes parallel. Also the same here, right 
for right exotropia with wider palpebral fissure. The decision was right major rectus resection, and this is the post operative. Parallel eyes and equal palpebral fissure width. The same in this man. Residual right exotropia, wider palpebral fissure, decision for reoperation, right major rectus resection, and this is the post operative, good alignment and equal palpebral fissure width. In consecutive strabismus, where overcorrection of isotropia is leading to consecutive exotropia, or more recession was done or more muscles were operated upon. Muscle restriction and fat adherence syndrome could be there, slipped or lost muscles. Here, this girl is having consecutive exotropia. She is aged 20 years, presenting with left exotropia, and the original deviation was left isotropia from the history. Data of the previous surgery was detected by slit lamp examination where conjunctival scar was found nasally in both eyes and temporal in left eye. So the expected surgery is bilateral major rectus recession and left lateral rectus resection. That is, more muscles were operated upon. Ocular motility was normal, no limitation of adduction for subduction test, no restriction. So the plan of surgery here is to recess the previously resected left lateral rectus muscle. And here is the post-operative result with parallel eyes and equal palpebral fissure. Here, left exotropia, we decided to resect the left major rectus muscle and this is the post-operative parallel eyes and equal width of the palpebral fissure. Also in consecutive exotropia, we had this five years girl with history of congenital isotropia, operated at six months then, right hypertropia operated at two years. The present deviation is right exotropia, 35 prisms, and hypertropia, which is variable. Previous surgery data, there was bilateral nasal conjunctival scar and lower temporal scar, denoting that the expected surgery was bilateral major rectus recession and right inferior oblique weakening procedure. The ocular motility here, no limitation of adduction and right dissociated vertical deviation. For subduction test, no restriction. Here, the post-operative result, no exotropia and no hypertropia. Here another case uh, of consecutive exotropia where the previous deviation was uh, isotropia. It was a case of congenital isotropia and th there was bilateral slipped major rectus muscle. And here the intraoperative uh, picture. There was a fusiform expansion immediately posterior to the demarcation line between the empty capsule and the muscle. The muscle is retrieved and reattached again to the insertion tendon. We can have a new deviation as dissociated vertical deviation or inferior oblique overaction appearing after surgery of horizontal muscle and this could be managed accordingly by weakening of the inferior oblique in case of inferior oblique overaction as seen in this diagram. According to the grade of inferior oblique, it could be grade 1, like this, grade 2, grade 3, and in grade 4 we can do 
total anteriorization of the inferior oblique as seen in this diagram. This is a case also of new deviation. It is a case of left superior oblique muscle palsy. We see hypertrophy of the left eye with head tilt and face turned toward the right side. And this case was managed by inferior oblique muscle recession. It was grade between grade 2 and grade 3. And here is the post-operative result. No hypertropia of the left eye and no head. This is a case of right inferior oblique muscle overaction in, and it is treated by recession of the inferior oblique and here is the post-operative clinical picture and no hypertrophy of the right eye. Restrictive strabismus could be one of the causes for leading to reoperation. This occurred after retinal detachment surgery by cerclage and for seduction test showed major rectus restriction in the left eye. We see that there is left isotropia and defective abduction of the left eye and for seduction test showed restriction. Here this case was managed by left major rectus dissection from the adhesions around and recession by hang back technique. This is a post-operative clinical picture, no isotropia, and the abduction of the left eye remained or regained to be normal. Here, strabismus post-vitrectomy in the right eye. We see there is exotropia in the right eye with widening of the palpebral fissure. And in this case, we did removal of the submuscular silicon particles and major rectus muscle resection to diminish the width of the palpebral fissure and here is the post-operative result the eyes regain to be parallel and the palpebral fissures of equal size and thank you so much